In this video, we'll find the molecular geometry and bond angles for BrO3 minus. This is the bromate ion. The first thing we need to do is look at the Lewis structure for the bromate ion. So this is a Lewis structure for the bromate ion here. And what we're going to do is count how many things are attached to this central bromine atom here. So we have this oxygen here, 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 and then we have a lone pair. So we have a total of four things attached to the bromate ion, and one of them is a lone pair. So let's take a look at this table here. So according to the table, we have four things attached. That's called the steric number. And we're looking for one lone pair right here. So we go down and over. And that tells us that we're going to have this trigonal pyramidal molecular geometry here for BrO3 minus. The bond angle, and this is the ideal bond angle, that's going to be about 109.5. So let's take a look at why we end up with this molecular geometry. So this is our central bromine atom. We'll add a single bond. Then we add the double bonded oxygen, and they spread out as far as they can. Then we add that other double bonded oxygen. At this point, we have trigonal planar. It's all in a plane. When we add that lone pair, that pushes everything down. We end up with a trigonal pyramidal molecular geometry for this BrO3 minus ion. So this is the molecular geometry for the bromate ion. And you can see this lone pair kind of forces things down. We have the ideal bond angle of 109.5. So because of the lone pair and the oxygen atoms here, probably going to be closer to 105 or 104 degrees if you were to measure it in the lab. So that's the molecular geometry for BrO3 minus. We have our trigonal pyramidal. If you need the electron geometry, we have these four things here in a tetrahedral geometry. This is Dr. V, and thanks for watching.